Hey guys, it's Doozy. Uh, today, I'm just going to do a quick talk. I don't know how quick it's going to be, but I'm just going to do a talk rather on <clears throat> a beginner's toolkit. Um, I wish I had something like this or even something similar at the time. Um, when I started, I didn't know where to look. And like I said, as I've mentioned before, I've come from a background which is un completely non-IT related, right? And um, a few years ago, I decided, right, okay, hold on a second, I'll do something different. And it, it was a, it was a, it was a difficult journey. Well, I won't say difficult. It was, well, yeah, difficultish journey. Uh, in the sense that I didn't know what, what I wanted to do, where to start. Um, and very thankfully, I did start off learning. Um, Networking. I spent a lot of time learning network. I think it was like eight or nine months self uh, self study. I did a lot of theory work. Did a lot of practical. It was fantastic. And then when I found out it lacking, I didn't know how handy it would come in. And and very fortunately, it's extremely handy to know networking. But anyway, um, beginner's toolkit, right? So what do I need in my beginner's toolkit? So this is, this is just as a starting point, right? So you're completely new, right? You've read, you, you know, you've read a few things online. You've seen a couple of uh, videos and, and whatnot. But you still don't know, right? Okay, hold on a second. What do I really need? What, what's what's my foundations, right? Hopefully this will help, right? And so the first thing <clears throat> is Google Foo. Now, you might not know what Google Foo means. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's wordplay from Kung Fu. Knowing how to use Google is an event is a very, very important skill. And you, you'll understand why as you develop your knowledge, right? When you want to find, uh, when you want to do OSINT, for example, Google's fantastic for it. You know, when you want to find uh, CVEs uh, to exploit something, again, you go to Google for, for anything. You want to find um, some um, files which have been uh, either misconfigured or they've been accidentally left by an admin which are not hidden. This is where your Google Fool comes into play. Um, Nmap, right? You've got to have Nmap. Nmap is by far one of the best tools available to any ethical hacker, penetration tester, anyone in cybersecurity. It's a fantastic tool, right? And for admins, uh, for anyone, right? Burp Suite, another fantastic tool. Um, you might not use it as much as a beginner, but it's good to have it in your back pocket, right? Especially when you get the hang of using it. It is such a powerful tool. You'll always wonder, how did I do without this, right? Python. Python's on every single system you can imagine on, on, on Linux, Linux, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's good to have um, some basic knowledge of Python. As you've seen from previous tutorials that I've done, Python's come in very, very handy, right? Um, so yeah, Python in there. Um, the next is um, a website. Again, something you should be familiar with from having watched any of my previous uh, videos I've done is GTFO bins. Think of this as your second best friend to Google, right? Um, then we move on to Netcat. Again, a fantastic tool, right? It is, it is a multi-purpose tool, but it's mainly, I mean, what mainly what we'll use it for is reverse uh, connections. Then you've got curl and wget. Now I've done an example of wget in, in a previous video. Um, it enables you to, um, well, you can, with curl, you can get web pages, right? With wget, you can download information. We're saying with curl, you can download resources from your box onto the vulnerable box. <clears throat> Then we move on to stuff like Hydra, John the Ripper, right? And then we've got something called Crackstation website. I, I promise you it's a legitimate website, despite the name, right? Um, but if you do come up against something dodgy, then you definitely got the wrong site, right? Hydra, John the Ripper, these will enable you to crack different types of hashes, right? To retrieve the plain text password. Crackstation website, again, if you've gone onto the right website, right? Um, put an MD5 hash in there or whatever, right? And ask it to crack it. It's a fantastic website. Really, really useful, right? Keep this in the back of your mind, right? Great, great tool sets to have. 
then we've got uh, directory scanning tools, right? We've got GoBuster, we've got Derb, we've got Fuff. Whatever you prefer using. Uh, my go-to tool is, well, it's actually GoBuster, but Fuff is great as well, right? And this, uh, and this is basically when, when you want to, you know, you come across a website, right? There's no information there. You think, right, okay, hold on a second. What if I run a directory scan against it? Can I find some hidden directories that I might be able to access and see what's going on in the background, right? This is why it's really, really important to um, use these directory scanning tools. Now this, for me, right? Uh, you know, you might speak to someone else and they might say, oh no, you might need this, you need this. This is just from personal experience, right? Th there's, there's no right or wrong answer, right? Just so you know that, right? The last thing I wanna do is confuse any beginners. That wouldn't be fair. But from a personal perspective, from my own experience, as a starting point, this is a fantastic toolkit to have. This is a, it's a great arsenal of really good weapons, right? And you can do a lot with this. And, you can, and if you focus on it, you'll come across similar tools and, and you can expand your knowledge from there. But have this as a starting point, right? It, it, it will help. Right, what we've got next? Um, I'm going to discuss the methodology uh, for websites, right? I know I've discussed this in, in a previous tutorial, but I'd rather just discuss it here. So, you know, it's, it's in one place. So what methodology should I follow when a website exists, right? So you run an Nmap scan, you see port 80 open, right? Or port 8000 or port 88. Remember, it's not always port 80, it doesn't always have to be, right? But just for this example, we're going to say if you see port 80, you go type in the IP address or the name of the website and into the browser and up, up pops a website, right? As a starting point, the following should always be considered. Right, let's check out a robots.txt. It shows what's allowed and disallowed, it shows the directories that are allowed and disallowed. And there's some interesting information that can be found here. So let me get a sip of water. The second thing we want to have um, for this uh, website methodologies is view the source code, look for the comments, look for other directories in the source code, sometimes information left behind in error. Right? It does happen. And then lastly, run a directory scan. We've just been talking about GoBuster, Derb, Fof. What interesting hidden directories can you find? Right? Now, if you, if you watch, uh, there's a tutorial I've done uh, of, a, of a CTF challenge called Root Me from Try Hack Me. And in there, we run a directory scan and we find a hidden directory that enables us to upload a PHP shell. And using Netcat, we get a reverse connection, right? Right, let's move on. Methodology for privilege escalation. Linux or Linux again, however you want to say it, you know, it's entirely your choice. So what methodology should I follow for privilege escalation, all right, on uh, Linux boxes? So as a starting point, the following should be considered. And I said in, 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 in the videos I've done, right, <clears throat> some of the shorter ones, you know, I've, I've talked about this repeatedly, like a broken record, in fact. In fact, I rambled on more than I've probably needed to in them videos about how important this is. And, I, and I'll keep doing it because, you know, I'm just reinforcing the fact how important it is to follow a methodology like this. And it makes life easier for you, right? So that's what it's all about. So the, the first thing is snooping around. You know, run LSLA, right? Is there any files on there that's interesting? Can you do anything with them, right? Um, if you do find a file in there, you can run file, you can run strings on that file name and see if you can get some more information, right? Um, second is using the find command to look for SUID flag set. This is when we're using perm uh, dash zero four thousand. I think you can do it without the zero anyway. I've just got a habit of doing zero. Um, third, find command to look for writable files. Such as shadow. I mean, can, is, has it been accidentally left in a state where shadow is writable by everyone if so you're laughing you know give yourself an entry in there you've got a nice way in haven't you um next we want to see what the user can run as root privileges obviously it'll be limited right but sudo dash l right if it says there that um 
you know, nav can run, blah, 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 as root with no password. Well, let's go to our friend. Let's go to GTA 4 bins. Is there something in there that we can use to exploit and gain privilege escalation? Um, then we also want to look at searching for Linux capabilities, right? And we've got get cap dash R. All right, we want to look for the capabilities. What can we do with it? There's many, many different types of capabilities. So that's another really good one. <clears throat> and then looking at Etsy cron tab. Is there something in there that we can potentially exploit, you know, to, to, to gain access to resources that we shouldn't have? I did a video on this, right, where there was something running in Etsy cron tab. Right. I think we went from student to teacher, and then from there we explored it even further to get root access. Right. Uh, let's move on. So SUID, how do I find the SUID set flag? So we can use any of the following commands. Right. Uh, my go-to is the first one. Uh, I don't know why this is. Uh, writable files, how do I find writable files? So we use the following commands. Again, we're looking for sensitive files like shadow, which we can write to, right? So there's the command for that. Um, uh, there's an example I've done, uh, a video rather, of where we do find a shadow file, which is writable by everyone. And I exploit that. Right, <clears throat> next question is what else should I learn, right? Networking basis. Networking is very, very important. So you feel if you've got a strong interest in ethical hacking, cybersecurity, you want to go into penetration testing, you must know your networking. Right? You know, learn about um, routing protocols, learn about switches and um, how switches operate. I promise you, it will pay dividends having this kind of knowledge. Right? I'm telling you that from my own experience that I spent so much time learning networking that, excuse me, that when it actually came to um, university, when the networking modules were presented, I was like, yeah, great, right? I've already covered this. You know, I, I, there's one thing I can tell you right now is how important it is to know networking basics, right? Second, uh, Linux basics, right? Knowing the commands, knowing, you know, being comfortable on command line is a good skill to have and it's a good position to be in, right? If you get a chance, mess around 10 minutes a day. It doesn't matter if you're creating a directory and deleting directories, if you're moving between the directories, but you're getting comfortable with it. And that's so very important, right? Learn which services are associated to which ports, right? So, you know, what's FTP service? What port is that related to? SSH, you know, and, like, and one thing I will note, it's not always guaranteed. So, like I said to you earlier, yeah, port 80, right? We always associate port 80, right? Yep, HTTP, there's going to be a website running somewhere, but it doesn't have to be. An admin can easily change that port to 8080, 8000, but... It's having the knowledge to know, right? Hold on a second, right? Yeah, yeah, and traditionally it's like this, but maybe it's not like this this time, but at least you have that knowledge, right? Python basics and writing scripts, and this includes bash scripting, really, really important. You don't have to be flash at Python. You don't have to be expert at Python. Could you write a quick basic script? It doesn't matter if you can remember it. It's not about remembering something. This is about, right, do you know where to look? Right, if you if, if I were to give you a script, can you understand that script and say, well, hang about, Nav, I'll tell you what, I do need to change that, I need to change that. Yeah, okay, let's run with that. You want to be in that position. There's no need to go all out and going mental trying to learn Python. All of Python learning, uh, you know, you learn enough so it'll benefit you and then you can build up from there, right? Always remember theory is great but nothing beats hands-on, right? This is where practical exercises come in. So if you get the opportunity, right? If you come across any practical exercises to do networking, you know, you've got, you've got um, I think for Cisco, NetCAD, I think it is, you can use Packet Tracer. Get the hands-on experience, mess around, mess around with the command line as well. A great skill to have, right? Same with Linux, 
right? You come across a box or even if you set up your own virtual machine, just mess around on it 10, 15 minutes a day. Mess around with Python. You know, get a user input. Input, you know, uh, asking whatever your age is, print that out to screen. It might, it might sound very, very simple, but at least you're doing something. You're developing that skill, right? This is practical exercises, right? Just go to GTFO bins, just spend 10 minutes reading it, read what it's about. And so it's in the back, you might think, I hang about, that's really good. Mess around with Nmap, mess around with these other tools, just so you know, you know where they are and you can relate to when to use them and how to use them. It'll come in very, very handy, I promise you. Um, I think that about covers it for today. Um, I want to thank you for your time. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, thank you very much, everyone. 